Good evening. We're certainly glad that you've chosen to join us tonight. Uh, we pray that our time together in midweek Bible study will be beneficial for us all. And I'd like to begin tonight uh, by making a confession. I'm sure after this I'll need to turn in my man card, but um, you know, I've gotten to the point to where I really enjoy watching Hallmark movies with my wife. She started watching them several years back uh, during Christmas and asked me to watch one with her one night. And I sat down and I watched it and I actually I enjoyed it. I, I somewhat became hooked. Soon after that, we changed television services and our new service didn't carry the Hallmark channel. So I found myself having to uh, subscribe to the Hallmark movie app online thing to where now we can watch Hallmark movies anywhere anytime that we choose. You know, we enjoy watching them because they're clean and they're usually feel-good love stories. There's only one problem that I have though. It seems to be a common theme to where some young girl will move away from her small town and move to the big city to pursue a career. And while she's there, she meets someone, she falls in love, they date for several years and they get engaged. Then for whatever reason, she usually gets called back to uh, her small town. And while she's there, she just realizes how much that she misses the small town. She either meets someone new or maybe rekindles a relationship from when she lived there before. And, and in a week's time, she finds herself leaving her career job, moving out of the big city back to the small town and getting married to the guy that, that she's been with for a week. I mean, and usually we're right there with her, cheering for her, you know, like, yes, this is the right decision. Move back to small town. Fall in love with this guy all over again. Leave the big city. And then they, they kiss into the sunset and live happily ever after. <clears throat> Well, here's what I'd be interested in. What if they did a sequel to one of these shows and they showed this young girl's life five, maybe even 10 years later? What do you think her life would look like then? You know, I'm sure that some of them would honestly, genuinely have the happily ever after life. But for some of them, they're going to realize, man, I made a knee jerk decision. It didn't turn out at all like I thought it was going to. You know, what happens to the relationship when the cares of life really kick in? When it's more than just courting and having a good time together. When they have to do real life together. It all seems so good, so easy during that first week. What happens when they say, I do, and, and life gets real again? You know, not just real, but sometimes really hard. What happens when life throws so much at them that they begin to question how strong their relationship really is? You know, two people becoming one is God's design. It's got so many beautiful benefits. But this process can become difficult. Matter of fact, you just might as well admit it. It will be difficult at times. We have to learn to work through these hard times to get to the real benefits that God has for, for us, the ones that he, he plans into our lives. You know, most of us, most of you know by now that my brain just goes in all these really strange ways, but whenever I see a movie like this where they court for a week, fall in love, get married, or even I hear about things like this in, in real life accounts, I think to Mark 4. Let me read Mark 4 to you. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it, and sat in it out on the lake. While all the people were along the shore at the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching he said, Listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up and the plants were scorched, 
and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they didn't bear uh, grain. But still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. And Jesus said, He who has ear, let him hear. You know, why does this parable remind me of the Hallmark movies? Or why do the Hallmark movies remind me of this parable? In particular, the ones where someone falls in love and gets married after knowing each other for only a week or so? Well, because we think that making the decision will lead to happily ever after. And we're surprised when it doesn't. And too often, we're willing to give up on the, on the decision that we've made when, when it doesn't end up happily ever after. Let's look at Jesus' explanation of this parable for a moment. In verse 13, we read, Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. So who is the farmer? Well, ultimately, you could say that, that God is the father and, or the farmer and that the seed is his word. But we all know that God doesn't typically speak audibly to us. He uses preachers or maybe other believers to speak his word to sow his seed for him. And so for the sake of illustration tonight, I'm, I'm going to say that the seed is being sown by the preacher through the church. And typically, when a preacher is preaching, it's in a sanctuary with lots of different people in there. So he's casting his seed out. He's casting, preaching the Word of God to many different types of people as he's preaching. Now, we as church members understand that one of our responsibilities is to get people from outside to come into the church so that they can be under the teaching of the Word, so that they can be there when the seed is sown. And ultimately, we would love for them to make a salvation decision for Jesus. In most cases, we offer an invitation at the end of the service to give them an opportunity to make this decision. Now keep in mind, as we're reading through this, we, the people in the church, are the different soils. The soil is the variable here. The seeds are always effective because they're the Word of God. He's casting them. How well they grow, though, is determined by the soil itself. So, as we're casting out to the people in the audience, some are simply hard. It says, uh, some people are like seed along the path where the Word is sown. Um, like I say, some people are simply hard to the Word. They're in the church, and we're glad they're there, but their hearts are just simply hard to the Gospel. They're not accustomed to these teachings, and Satan is ab isn't about to give in to them and to let them agree with what's being said. They came into the service hard for whatever reason, and Satan's going to be sure that they leave the service hard as well. They've been under the preaching of the Word, but Satan quickly removes any thoughts of, of these seeds, any thought of the Word from their mind as quickly as possible. He wastes no time bombarding them with the thoughts of the world, the logic that they came in with, and, and he's, he's going to distract them as soon as possible. He's going to, to take these thoughts away from them as, as soon as they leave the service, even if he waits that long. Verse 15 says, as soon as they hear it, as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Certainly, you know, we're going to do all we can to get them in the church. They may never hear the, the gospel. They may never have the seed sown to them otherwise. But it's going to take more than just getting them here. We're going to have to work with them preparing their soil. We're glad they came under the teaching, but we realize they didn't get it. Just hearing wasn't enough. You know we're not to be hearers of the Word only. It's got to find its way into our life. So that's the first person, the first soil. Then the second one 
there's a person, there's a soil that's, uh, he, Jesus equates it to rocky soil. This is where things get a little more tricky. Look at verse 16. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. I mean, check out the wording of this. They come to church and they like what they hear. They receive it with joy. Maybe even make the decision that we're hoping that they make. They leave feeling pretty good about themselves. I've been to church. I've heard the word. I've made a decision for Jesus. I mean, you've seen this before. Someone's life feels somewhat empty. They know that they need something in life. They hear the message of Jesus and they think, that's exactly what I need. And they receive it with joy. It just feels right. Verse 17, But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. They fall away. Well, they made a decision, didn't they? Isn't, it, isn't that all it takes? But their faith became challenged. They're persecuted for their belief. They question whether they did something right or not. They question what they've done, and they quickly fall away. You know, whenever I read this, and I think where Jesus wants them to become, and I think where they are, <laughs> I picture an acorn. I mean, you've seen it. A small acorn laying on top of the ground. It's got this little shoot coming up out of it. The seed's been germinated, if you want to say it that way. It, it appears to begin to grow, but it has no root. Therefore, it, it never grows. It doesn't last. It looks promising at the beginning, but then it quickly falls away. Bottom line, it seems like they've made a decision that just equated to an emotional decision. It felt right at the time, but it never took root. They do Christian things. They think Christian thoughts. They say Christian words. But these thoughts, these actions, these words are challenged by the world's thinking. Their faith gets abandoned before it ever actually takes root. They're just like an acorn laying on top of rocky ground. It's got a little shoot coming up out of it, but it never takes root. There's a third soil, verse 18. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. Now these folks are very similar to the ones we just talked about. This soil, uh, the rocky soil, you know, it didn't take root. Well, these folks, they came into church as well. They heard the teaching. They were under the sowing of the seed, and, and they made their decision. As a matter of fact, theirs probably lasted a little longer. They began to live the Christian life. At first, everything seems good, but then life gets tough. The thorns start popping up again, and it chokes the life out of their decision. Instead of taking root and growing through the thorns, becoming a strong tree, a strong tree the thorns of life choke them out. They have to be aware of these thorns and do whatever is necessary to avoid them, to attach to Jesus, to grow among them. So much in life wants to choke out our walk with Jesus. And it may not even be bad things. You know, we think of so many temptations that come our way that, that we have to avoid because they're going to pull us down, and those are very real. But these thorns may actually even be good things in our lives. Jesus said that wealth and other desires could choke out their faith. Anything that distracts us from Jesus can prove to be a thorn. Verse 19, he reminds us that the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Remember, we said that we're the soils in each of these illustrations. The hard soil along the path has to be broken up. 
until we're willing to come to Jesus and be broken before Him, we'll never see anything lasting take place in our lives. Just being in a church service doesn't do anything. Remaining hard to the Word of God never allows His seed to, to germinate, if you will. Um, we have to really want that relationship with Him, not just what it can do for us. We must be willing to take up our cross daily and follow Him. Wanting, desiring a relationship with Jesus must be the desire of our heart. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be filled. Their seed will grow, if you want to say it that way. We've got to be willing to be broken and poured out before Jesus. You know, we stress decisions for Jesus, and rightfully so. But that only marks the beginning, not the end. Our relationship with Jesus must take root. And that just doesn't happen in the rocky soil. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And what is the will of his Father in heaven? John 6, 40, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I'll raise him up on that last day. Believe, we all believe, right? Remember that James says, even the demons believe. Believe means to place our complete trust in Jesus, to be willing to break up the soil, come to him broken, remove the rocks that would keep us from, from getting root to our relationship with him. Um, and when we live among the thorns, we must be willing to get rid of them as well, or they'll choke out our faith. For some of us, this may, may mean a complete different environment that we need to, to place ourselves into. Changing friends, changing job, changing our social setting. It may even mean giving up some good things that keep us from taking root with Jesus. You know, we could have a job. That's wonderful, pays great, love the people, but we realize that it's keeping me away from the things of God. May have to give up a job. And how often do we see sports? It really concerns me what we're teaching our children with all the sporting events that we're involving them in that keep them away from, from the teaching of God's Word. And recreational opportunities, well, a lot of good things in our lives can act as thorns that choke out our relationship with God. Nothing should stand between us and Jesus. Nothing should distract us from keeping our eyes fixed on Him. We've got to be willing to help this seed take root. God has to be allowed to do His work in our lives. It's not just a decision and that's it. Once Jesus, the Holy Spirit, takes His place in our lives, Paul uses it this way. He says we are being saved. It's a process of becoming one with Jesus, not just a one-time decision with no growth involved. Just making a decision and going back to life as it was will not last. We've got to be willing to cultivate the soil, fertilize the soil, and we can do that through scripture reading, scripture study, reading books that help us grow, sitting under teaching of God's Word, sermons. Listening to music can be a, a good way to, to cultivate the soil. And putting ourselves in, in contact with friends that are going to encourage us is very important. We must do all that we can to be sure that we're fertilizing the soil to help the seeds take root. You know, like I said a couple of weeks ago uh, during our study, when the Holy Spirit lives within you, you will see the fruit of the Spirit coming to fruition in your life. You want what God has in store for you, and I know we all do. We've got to be good soil. We've got to be broken, cultivated, fertilized. How do we know 
if that's where we are in our life? How do we know if we've reached the point of being good soil? Verse 20 says, Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, just like the others have, and produce a crop 30, 60, or even 100 times what was sown. God begins to work in our life. We see evidence of Him. We begin to produce a crop. We begin to produce fruit in our lives. He takes the seed that fell on you and He grows it 30, 60, 100 times. If He's allowed to work in your life, if you are good soil, His seed will grow. But remember Matthew 25, 29. Everyone who has will be given more, and he will have a, an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he does have, will be taken from him. Good soil will produce more of the things of God. We won't be an acorn laying on top of the ground. Instead, Psalm 1, 3 says, We'll be like trees planted by the streams of water which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its root by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. Only God knows our hearts. But Jesus wants us to, to know that not everyone that's sitting under the teaching of God's Word are growing in Him. Some come in, hear it, never do anything with it. Some hear it, receive it with joy, but it never takes root. Some hear it, receive it with joy, even live out what they feel is the Christian life for a while. But then the thorns of life choke out their relationship with Jesus. Jesus wants us to understand that a healthy relationship with Him is one that takes root. It resists the things of this world. It's growing more and more every day. You know a tree by its fruit. But if the tree never takes root, it will never produce fruit. God's plan for your life doesn't stop with an acorn sprouting on top of the soil. His plans for you takes root becomes a mighty tree bearing much fruit. Remember what Jeremiah said? He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. So if we did a sequel on your Christian life from the time you said, I do, to the Lord, is it always growing, always producing fruit? Or does it look like an acorn on top of the ground, never taking root, never producing fruit? Honestly, I hope your Christian life never becomes a Hallmark movie. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for putting into parables illustrations that we can understand what you would say to us. We thank you for our churches and pastors that are faithful to, to cast the seed to all who are there. But Father, may we never be content to sit in the words and become hearers only. May we understand that we need, we must desire strong a relationship with you. One that takes root, one that grows strong, one that can resist the thorns around it, one that produces fruit 30, 60, 100 times. May we be genuine. May we be honest as we look at ourselves and let you show us whether your, your relationship with us has taken root in our lives or whether we're still that acorn sitting on top of the ground in danger of being choked out. Father, speak to our hearts. Help us to respond appropriately. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us tonight.